Now the new tube, right, so got another camp on. Uh, it's only an overnight of this one. Uh, actually on my way back home from uh, the one that we've just been to uh, for Stu's birthday. He's gone home, uh, catch up on a few little bits and pieces like that. I've come straight over this way on. Uh, it's a little bit closer to home for me. Uh, see, uh, quite a few people will recognise this location. There we go. Uh, for those that don't know, this is Church Farm in Ardley. Uh, nice setup. It's um, they've got no end of little businesses that are, that are on site, and then as well as that, they've got a big campground over the field there. Then they've got these cabins here. Uh, I tried to get one of the cabins, but unfortunately, I think what's happened is is uh, they've been busy over the school holidays, so none of them are ready uh, that I could use, unfortunately. So we've just parked up. Uh, when Stu gets back, I'm going to stick him here or something like that. Plenty of room for his 9x9 round here somewhere. So, yeah, I think he's going to pick some food up on the way. We've got some food left over in the fridge, but uh, it was his birthday, so <laughs> we've both got stinking hangovers. <laughs> so, yeah, we'll not be cooking. Uh, yeah, I'll bring you back in a little bit. Can have a look round. There's um, quite a few of these scorch patches. Uh, I drove full length up and back again just to have a nosy, which is the best spot. But there's quite a few bits of wood and bits left over, so I'm going to go and scrounge them off of each of the uh, leftovers thing. Because I bought some logs, but they're eight quid, and I begrudge buying logs when uh, I do what I do. So the upside is at this place. I have my shoes off because the last one. <laughs> There's broken glass and bottles and all sorts everywhere, so it's not ideal, is it? As you can probably see it here, look. if you get it down here but uh, just found a nice piece of flint on the floor I don't know whether that's someone that's a bit bushcrafty that's dropped a little shard of it or uh, or if you just get it around this area I don't a couple of pegs down here. Uh, in fact I'm going to leave that flap in for now. The reason I'm going to leave that flap in is we've got the choice of pegging it down to the floor makes an end wall or when another vehicle turns up you can put it up like this. The other thing you can do is you can string this side up higher which makes a V. Uh, lower one pole to the other side so the water comes down in that way it funnels it in one direction. Uh, the thing People use tarps and stuff as water collection, you've got to be very careful of that. Reason being, this is canvas, it's outside all year round, it gets dirty, it gets uh, mould, all kinds of little nasties on it that you wouldn't want to be ingesting. So, if you do collect rainwater off of a, a tarp or something, uh, it's going to be either really, really, really confidently uh, cleaned through a filter, uh, through chemical, whatever you're going to do, or it only be used as washing water. Personally, we only ever collect it for washing up water, so you can get the bulk of the dirt off your plates or something, then wash them in some proper, clean, soapy water. 
Uh, so yeah, that's just a little bit of an option, isn't it? So we'll peg that down in a second. Uh, one of the things you need to bear in mind, I've got a really, really tall vehicle. So what that does, is because it has to come down on such an angle and the legs aren't as long, the legs want to like kind of go back on the same angle. Uh, and by pulling them forward like that, it does put pressure on them pins. But that's one of the things I'm gonna have to take on board. If the brake, that's me, because I'm using it differently to what it's made to do. So it's what it is, isn't it? walk around as well get some more tent pegs whenever I stop anywhere like this I always find tent pegs I can't remember the last time I actually bought some seen in the Land Rover. Got the seating area there, turns into a bed, kitchen, Ooh, it's getting a bit late so got the pump lights on. There we go. do a full run through of this again. Uh, I think I'll start doing them every like nine months or something like that as things get done. But yeah, carriage space under there. Uh, got water tanks under that side. Uh, I'm going to change all my gas supply uh, on that side and have a, a long range fuel tank in there get another like probably four or five hundred mile range if I can get a decent size one under there and that goes, I don't know if you can see that goes quite a way back uh, it's about four or five feet so four or five feet by two feet by two feet by, by the wheel arch it's, uh, it's a fair amount of diesel that so under here we've got the shower system just going to plumb that back up uh, Got all my ablutions kit and everything in there. A bit of a table if you want to put all your stuff on it. That's normally folded up, but because I'm on a bit of a, a hill, I'm just using that. It stops the door from shutting. Uh, got the fair spare wheel grill. I carry two spare wheels because if you if you bust a tire, you might need another one. Uh, and there's for some reason uh, there's a big thing. There's um, a lot of walkers. They're assholes. Um, they're going out and they're putting traps in puddles and stuff like that and they're getting like um, welding spikes together and things so as you're going green laning and stuff the, you'll go through it and you'll pop all four tyres great um, the thing that frustrates me about this is walkers have got thousands and thousands and thousands of miles of uh, footpaths and they're probably the most destructive erosive people using them just through sheer numbers, not because they're trying to, or they'll get to a bit of a puddle and they'll go veering up and round and all the rest of it, and they cause all this damage to the point where, when you're sat at E-Day, you'll probably quite often see a helicopter taking uh, 
tons and tons and tons of stone to repair the paths and all the rest of it but for some reason they think that because we're in vehicles we shouldn't be on green lanes which they've bear in mind they've got thousands of miles of footpaths that they can go on up mountains everything we've got hundreds of miles of lanes most of which they're nothing more than a farm track you know they're nothing nothing special don't get me wrong there is off-roaders that buy a cheap 500 quid car off ebay razz it down the lanes make a right mess and all the rest of it just like you get people going down footpaths and setting fire to stuff and damaging things you're gonna get idiots that's where i think there should be something more in place where um i've seen other countries where you either adopt a trail or you get permission as a club to go on a trail and if there's damage they can come back to that club which i think that's the proper way of doing it uh, not these vigilante landowners and uh, walkers and whatnot that want to go around wrecking people's vehicles because the, <laughs> the, the, the right arrogant knobs that you'll be going down a lane and they'll just turn the back on you you know what well, I acknowledge you like you're in the wrong for driving down a byway which it's a road they're walking down a road just because it's got rocks and all the rest of it it's still legally a road uh, we can share it but there's a lot of them that think we shouldn't be on there but if they if they did a bit of research and did the history they'll find that there weren't allowed a lot of places to walk it's only from people pushing the issue that they wanted to get out there and i've got quite a few disabled friends and less abled friends and it's the only way they get to see the countryside uh and it's uh, it's a bit sad but that's this evening's rant while i'm on my own and uh yeah apart from the planes this is a nice a nice location we must be near i think it's stansted airport something like that because every few minutes there's a bloody plane if anyone's wondering what this is it's the woody wood prepper stove bought this uh about three years ago something like that uh really good bit of kit it's uh it's lasting well it's taking a bit of heat uh, and it's made by proper proper blacksmith so yeah it's uh it's a good bit of kit and uh, no they don't have a website or anything like that that i'm aware of um the best way to get in touch with the fellow that makes these if you are interested is through the camp shaky lads uh, i'm sure you'll find the youtube channels uh and the facebook groups and everything else but it's woody wood prepper and i think it's i'm guessing now but i want to say it's it's woody stoves or woody not sure but anyway that's the information I'm not going to go searching for it. If you want to have a look at it, you can Google it. And uh, thanks again, because uh, Tiny Outdoors, he actually, I went I went on my motorbike uh, to the meet where I bought this, and uh, he actually met me in a car park, and uh, weeks later with the stove and, and brought it to me. So, yeah, I've not forgot that, thank you. So on this side, looking at it, you can have fires on the ground. And they don't seem that chewed about it. There's burn patches pretty much outside every single cabin, but it is quite windy tonight. So just as a little bit more of a leave no trace thing, I'm gonna have the raised fire pit and uh, we've got the windshield all the way around, haven't we? So uh, it's gonna be less soot in, soot in his eyes and things like that. So they make for a more pleasant camp. All right, straighten this out and we'll make a fire. You can do as well. You've got your three rails along the back stick a kettle up there uh, or you've got this height adjustable one so you can follow the fire up and down so yeah like I say it's a heavy bit of kit but if you can spare the the weight and everything I like it and he also does like ones that are half depth as well so they're half the size and I think he does some uh, thin fully collapsible ones that go in bags so yeah pretty funky thing Here's something people don't see very often. This is uh, one that Wessex Blades did for me. It's my own vintage uh, little hatchet thing. Uh, and what he did is, uh, kind of like carrying this one, he's done all this amazing leather work and tooling and everything. Look at this. That's it. Just nice in there.
this is not a splitting axe. I mean, this is just a, it's a very fast, light little thing. Uh, reason I like this is you can use it a lot like a knife. Uh, it's a little fine work you can do with it. You can use it to split. It's not the best tool for it, but then again, I've found uh, if you get a tool that's very, very good at one thing, it tends to be very bad at everything else. So I like things that are okay at a lot of things because I find they're a more versatile tool, especially when you, you've got limited capacity for carrying things. So we've got the bigger logs for lighter, got some bit bigger sticks, some bit smaller sticks, some really really thin sticks and some slivers. So now all we need, a bit of kindling, something like that. Not kindling, that's kindling. <laughs> we, we need a little bit of either a bit of cardboard or something we can light or ideal world would be um, you know a bit of dry grass, something like that. Uh, something we can get a ferrocene rod in or I'll just grab a lighter. I get some right stupid comments sometimes. I, recently, I've had a guy going, how much was that sparky stick thing? Surely it'd be cheaper to get a 99p lighter. So totally missing the point. I've got a blowtorch sat in the Land Rover. I could just use that. Strange people. So, got a bit of cardboard. Oh, anyway. It's totally cheap. Bit of gun oil. Always have gun oil in your Land Rover. <laughs> Professional bushcraft. See, if I do it tra traditionally, the preppers say, what are you doing? If I do it preppy style, I get all the bushcrafters going, what are you doing? Right, so that bag there, that were about eight quid, which I nearly fell off on here, how much wood is nowadays. Uh, so, I mean, what's that? That's going to be a good 10, 12 quid worth of wood that I've just found walking around all the old uh, campfires and stuff. You know, people have just left everything. Got the composting toilet. Another one over there. Got a little shower there, that should be fun in the morning. I like when you still live in my cabin, that. <laughs> I'm making my cabin sound really bad, it was really nice. It's just I didn't have proper heating in it, so in winter it was a bit uh, fresh. <laughs> Hey. Got? That thing down go. Let's go see how it works. I'm guessing on this side there'll be a little LPG boiler. Yep. Yep, same as the lander. Nice. So, should just be able to fire that up and it'll just do its thing. On demand hot water in a shed. Sweet. This is the, the main camping field if anyone's wondering. towards the farm. That's the bed set up. Let's go for the evening. Oh, 
Oh. <laughs> oh, green LEDs are on, on the side. Right, really, really relaxing night. That was that was needed. Uh, I had a couple of good nights before light, but you know it's like the first night you don't really relax because you're getting all your stuff together and everything. You're seeing everybody, uh, have a couple of beers and stuff, but you're still waking up early the next morning thinking you're going to work and everything, aren't you? So you don't really sleep well. The second night. I stayed up, having a laugh and a joke, we had some good food, a load of beers and stuff, so uh, not the greatest night's sleep because you, you wake up with a sore head. Last night, really, really chilled, just me and Stu just sat around talking crap. Uh, yeah, it's uh, really relaxing, so what I'm going to do now, just on his way up to the composting toilet, going to get down, put me on in a way, have a tidy round and everything. Uh, and I'm going to pull up, back up this end on the way out, get a shower in that shack thing, uh, and head up. Cause I'm going to get a, the I'm going to get an awning measured up for for the side. Uh, going to get one. I like my military canvas. It works for what I do. It doesn't break. It's it's decent kit. Uh, so what I'm going to do is have that measured up to have all the poles and things put where I want to. So yeah, carry on going with that. Right, just a reminder, uh, 11th of May in Doncaster at uh, Ashworth Barracks Museum, you can have a coffee morning. So for the people that did want to meet up with me, say hello, uh, there'll be a few of the lads there as well. Uh, uh, yeah, come down. If you want to have a look around the vehicle, just let us know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a good location, there's somewhere to get some something to eat, uh, get yourself a brew. Um, there's a good museum to look round, very hands-on, uh, meet some like-minded people. What they've done is they're going to let us camp, so there's not huge amounts to do other than sit, chat, look at vehicles, all the rest of it. It was just going to be a coffee morning for a few hours, but for the people that are coming a bit further, like Stu and that, that's, you know, it's three, four hours for him. Uh, they've, they've said we can camp over for, for the night for five pounds a night on top of you know if you want to go around the museum or get some food and all that lot so if you want to camp out i'm going to be there from around 1600 on the friday after work like i say it's it's not till saturday morning that the proper meet up if you want to just come down to say hello uh, and you can stop saturday night as well if you want uh, i'll be away sunday morning uh, but yeah the options there um there's a I've got a license for the weekend for the bar as well, so if it rains we can go in there uh, or you can just have a pint or something, so yeah, options, you lot wanted meetups and uh, wanted to come and say hello and stuff and I appreciate not everybody lives near Doncaster but it's around the corner from me and it's the first coffee meet so if you're about, come to it, uh, if people don't come to it and it doesn't work, it doesn't happen again, so it's up to you as whether you want to use this, if not you know, there's the Z-Dale at the, at the end of May. Stu. What? No. <laughs> Is it further away now? Waddle faster! <laughs> <laughs>